Welcome back to ECW 2006 and Cyberslam episode number 42 begins with a video package promoting tonight's main event. It's a fairly detailed look at the history of the hustle and it particularly focuses on the last couple of months and Xavier's growing distance from the group. He's been told by Homicide that he was at risk of being kicked out of the group and there's been little incidents with Siaki, Romero and Reyes that hinted that there wasn't quite the harmony that there once was within the group. After November to remember, Xavier reached his breaking point, taking down Homicide, the leader of the hustle in the middle of the ring. Of course, Xavier's 11-month association with the group has left him with little in the way of allies and friends on the ECW roster, and as a result, when he's been taken down by multiple members of the hustle, there has been nobody coming out to help him. Tonight, he will once again fight alone, facing Homicide in the show's main event. There's one question that remains unanswered going into the match, and that is the allegiance of Loki, who thus far has done his best to keep out of the Hustle's civil war. It's a 41 rating for the opening segment, not too good, not too bad, and we go into an in-ring promo from Little Guido, which is better. I'm very impressed with that, considering that Guido hasn't been booked that strongly. Guido called Mameluke a lightweight, who couldn't carry the load of being in a tag team with a star like him. Chuck Palumbo, however, knows exactly what being a star is all about. For that reason, he's coming with Guido all the way to the top, and he's going to prove it in the opening match of the night. That match sees Chuck Palumbo pick up a victory over Tony Mamluk. It's a pretty good D-plus rated match. Tony Mamluk does get some offence, but Palumbo is just too much for him, and in 6 minutes, 6 seconds, he beats him with the full throttle. Guido getting involved distracting and costing Mamluk the match. He probably wouldn't have won anyway. The two having great chemistry there, and that is a good 55 rating from Chuck Palumbo. I'm very happy with that. Mamluk not doing too bad, continuing the storyline, and during this, we will now complete the turn of Little Guido. He's gone to an underworld cocky gimmick, and it's only got an average rating, but it's okay because he's going to be a strong mid-card act, so we don't need to worry about having a perfect gimmick for him. After the match, the new FBI stand tall in the ring, Bigger and better than ever, Guido raising the hand of the victorious Chuck Palumbo in a not-so-good segment. We then get an interview from CM Punk in the back. Much better, he improvises masterfully, as he so often does. Punk, absolutely invaluable to this roster. He's clearly, though, looking over his shoulder as the interview's being conducted. He's been attacked multiple times over the last couple of weeks. He says that he is expecting the lights to go down any second and for that freak Kevin Furtick to jump in from behind. But... Punk is done with the games and the creepy little tricks. He has enough on his plate with Rhino goring him from out of nowhere every week, so he's going to make it really easy for Kevin Furtick. Next week on ECW Cyberslam, the final match of 2006, CM Punk is going to go one-on-one -on -one with Kevin Furtick. Also, he's spoken to Paul Heyman, who has made the match an ECW World Championship match. CM Punk says that Kevin Furtick may be undefeated, but he has never faced anybody like CM Punk. And next week, that O is going to go. Out of that, the commentators discuss Kevin Furtick's challenge for the title next week, of course, referencing the fact that he is undefeated. He has won every single match since he came to the ECW roster. A disgruntled Steve Carino comes out, leading the Extreme Horsemen to their ring for their match. Carino claims that he has been overlooked yet again and says he doesn't know who he has to beat or what the Extreme Horsemen have to do to get a fair shot in this company. The commentator suggests that they might be exactly what's holding Carino back as he continues to rely on the assistance of Birchill, Anderson and Richards to help him get the job done. Up next, it was a chance for C.W. Anderson and Stevie Richards to hold their own, facing off against Chad Collier and Brent Albright. A good promo from Steve Carino there, going into a fairly average match, but Brent Albright and Chad Collier continuing to build momentum as a team, defeating Anderson and Richards in 10 minutes 29, Albright getting the pin following a half Nelson suplex. After the match, they weren't given much chance to enjoy their victory, as Paul Burchill and Steve Carino looked to make their mark by attacking the team who beat them last month. Month. Homicide is on screen there. I don't know how it's even possible for me to have put Homicide in there instead of Chad Collier. Doesn't make any sense, but the wrong person on screen. Nonetheless, it doesn't change the content of the segment. The assault is stopped, however, when Balls Mahoney runs down to the ring with a steel chair, clearing off Birchall and Steve Carino, having teamed with Albright and Collier at November to remember. Of course, he was going to have their back. He takes a microphone from ringside and tells Carino to prove himself next week. He wants to come out here and bitch all the time. Why don't you prove it in the ring? He can bring Paul Birchall as well because Balls Mahoney has a partner of his own. He's bringing Tommy Dreamer. 
We then get a quick recap of Homicide's promo from last week. The leader of the hustle vowed to take down Xavier and make him regret the dumbest decision that he made of his life, which is leaving the hustle. We then get a promo from Xavier, which is live in the back. We probably should have had Jade on screen for this. He hasn't had much chance to express himself during his ECW run, but this is the promo that is solidifying his face turn. Xavier says that Homicide underestimates him, and that's fine. All he wants is the chance to prove himself. For 10, 11 months, he has been under the thumb of Homicide, fighting for what he thought was his future in ECW. He'd had his head filled with bullshit by Homicide, but he now realises... That Homicide doesn't give a damn about ECW, he cares about himself. Xavier says that he is a former world champion and tonight he shows exactly why Paul Heyman recruited him in the first place. Completing the turn there, above average for an Iceman gimmick, could have hoped for better but we go into that main event which again gets an okay rating. Thankfully we've had a couple of decent segments that's going to bring the show up, I'm expecting a C-, minus. I did hope we could get more from that, a 50 rating from Homicide, a 53 from Xavier, so pretty similar, it did get the crowd buzzing which is definitely a good thing, it had decent wrestling but unfortunately not much heat, Xavier picking up the biggest victory of his career in 15 minutes and 10 seconds, I think it was booked as a wild brawl or a car crash so there was all sorts of weapons involved, this was put over as a really a personal blood feud, taking everything out on each other, they went all out to destroy their opponent, Sonny Siaki, Ricky Reyes and Rocky Romero coming out during the course of the match, interestingly Low Key then came out and ordered them to the back, he wanted to see the two men fight it out, he wanted the best man to win and when it came to it, in the middle of the ring with a cross face locked in, Xavier forced Homicide to tap out for the victory. Xavier then stood tall in the ring alone after the match, following the hardest fought and potentially biggest victory of his career, certainly the biggest of his ECW career. The commentators put over the fact that Loki stopped their hustle from getting involved and sent the Havana Pitbulls and Siaki to the back, but they didn't want to underestimate the fight of Xavier, who won the match fair and square. He was the better man, Homicide laying out in the ring, having fallen to the man who he considered to be below the expected standards of the hustle. The irony in that, and Cyberslam went off the air with a potential new star born in ECW, the revolutionary Xavier standing tall. So it's a 56 C-, I'm pleased with that. Again, those segments must have helped boost us up. The in-ring action wasn't great, it wasn't too bad though, fairly average, but again, Happy with the show overall, happy to stay in these C minuses. And the final show of the year next week, CM Punk versus Kevin Fertig. I've said multiple times throughout the course of this save that CM Punk can get a good match with pretty much anybody. This is the true test of that. Kevin Fertig, we've seen for months and months, putting in pretty poor performances in the ring. Let's hope that we can get a good match out of him and next week a solid end to 2006. <laughs>